Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's second video, we're doing the extended uh, USA forecast for today's second video, so as well as on a Wednesday, uh, we're having a look at the weather for the next six weeks across uh, America, and uh, I shall get on with that for you in a moment, just to say that the first video released today was our 6am upload, and we'll be live streaming at 6pm tonight, we'll live stream our 10 to 14 day, uh, so I shall see you live at 6, and then straight after that, we will have the third installment of the Christmas Countdown. Please like, share, subscribe on video. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. And thank you so much to ECMDF.INT for supplying the charts as well. Right, so here we go then. This is the uh, week one mean sea level pressure anomaly for North America. It's taking us from the 7th to the 14th of November, the week that we are currently in. So you have high pressure towards the uh, northwest of America and into the west northwest of Canada. Some low pressure coming in up the Pacific in towards the Californian coast. So that pushing a little bit further eastwards into the southern part of America. Um, and then we've got a ridge here up towards the uh, Great Lakes and into the Midwest with a trough of low pressure down here. This is going to be Nicole, uh, either trouble storm or hurricane Nicole heading into Florida and then uh, moving in that direction. In the next few days, the 500 millibar height anomaly looks like this. So we've got below average heights from the Pacific in towards this western uh, coast. We've got above average heights, high pressure in the far northwest, and that does extend into northern and also some central and eastern parts of America. Again, there's that trough associated uh, with tropical storm and or hurricane Nicole. The temperature anomaly shows an east-west split. So, northern and western air is significantly cooler than average all the way from, like, um, California right the way up to the, uh, up to the Canadian border and even into western parts of uh, Canada. Very significantly cold average, actually. Some places where we've got these, this deepest blue shading are going to, like, 10 Celsius or more below average. Further eastwards, it's significantly warmer than average across many of these southern and eastern parts of America, particularly so up the eastern seaboard. Southern Southeast America also looking quite warm. Precipitation uh, looks like that. So it's dry in the extreme northwest, wet from the Pacific in towards the west coast of California, and then on towards the Rockies, dry across the southern and also uh, central states just here, wetter around the Great Lakes, heading up in towards uh, Canada. And then this wet weather on the eastern side, this is Nicole. This is the track of Nicole that we see here going up the east coast. So um, uh, around Florida, where we've got the wettest weather as Nicole makes landfall. And then running up the eastern side, that's the forecast track of, uh, of hurricane, potential hurricane Nicole. Right, that's week one done. Week two will be the 14th to 21st of November. Uh, a rich dominating across many parts of Europe, so high pressure, mainly centred in the northwest, but also extending into many of the central and also even some eastern parts of America in this week. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. It's rather different, that, doesn't it? So that got, like, top of below average heights within the 500 millibar flow coming in from the uh, North Atlantic. We have got, coming in from the, um, from Canada, I should say, from Pacific O towards the uh, North Atlantic. We have got high pressure above average heights here in the far southeastern part of America and still that blocking signal around the extreme northwest. Not sure how the 500 millibar heights uh, connects to the mean sea of our pressure anomaly there, but America is a very different climate to what I'm used to, which is why I'm always a little bit unsure about doing these forecasts for America. They look very, very different scenarios, aren't they? Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly for week two, see what that's doing. We're going widespread cold. Wow, 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 wow. So those colder temperatures in the west and the northwest, they start expanding out right way over the country. I think that trough of low pressure has got to be pushing in really with a dip, with a dip in the jet stream uh, as well. So um, the cold temperatures from the north and northwest expanding out right way towards the eastern side of America in the second week. The precipitation anomaly looks like that. So a uh, dry in the northwest, pretty dry through the Great Lakes and up to the northeast as well. 
wetter down here across the southern parts of America. Um, that's probably just about cold air is, is, you know, bumping into the warm air around the Gulf Coast and whatnot. And then uh, looking drier, <coughs> excuse me, looking drier, <coughs> excuse me once again, looking drier for Florida and uh, close to that eastern coast too. Right, week three is going to be the 21st to 28th of November. Uh, so high pressure band is slipping over towards the eastern side of America. Low pressure is out to the west, and we have some high pressure towards the southwest as well. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. So above average heights coming back into southern parts of America and into the east as well. As low pressure, the trough of below average heights gets pushed back up towards Canada. That should see the jet stream going back northwards again and should start to bring milder air back up from uh, the south and from the southwest. Let's have a look at the temperature anomaly. So we find the coldest of the uh, temperatures retreating back towards the north, those northern states. Still pretty chilly towards the southwest though. Uh, generally quite warm in the south, otherwise not much of a signal. I think we see a warm trend here through the third week after that expansion of the cold, you know, cold plunge in the second week. It looks like the third week we'll see the cold should be able to treat back up towards Canada again as milder air begins to spread back up from the south and from the southwest. The uh, precipitation anomaly looks like that. So it's pretty wet in these western states, again from like the Pacific coast towards the Rockies, dry through the central states in towards the Midwest, and then uh, wetter down here in some of these southern parts of America. Week 4 will be the 28th of November to the 5th of December. We get a trough of low pressure then being set up through the central parts of America. The 500 millibar height anomaly looks like that. So a ridge over on the eastern side, probably a trough coming through just here, I would have thought, and another ridge out there. So the jet stream then would do something a little bit like that, I suspect. The temperature anomaly goes milder than average across many of these central, southern, and also eastern parts of America. Still a little bit cooler out in the west, though. And the precipitation anomaly, very weak signal by this point, but a little bit wetter towards the west and also into some of those northern states. Week 5 will be the 5th route of the 12th of December. Very weak signals now, very weak signal by this point. A little bit of low pressure down in the south, a little bit of high pressure towards the southwest. Um, otherwise, again, you know, very, very weak signals. The 500 millibar height anomaly shows that area of above average height shrinking a little bit towards those east and south eastern parts of America. The temperature anomaly for week five shows the warmer than average area retreating a little bit down towards the south as well. Still a bit cool towards the west of north, west otherwise not much of a signal. And the uh, precipitation anomaly looks like that. So a little bit drier than average for those far northern and uh, eastern states, a little bit wetter than average in the southern states. It is again, though, a very weak signal. And then finally, week six will be the 12th to the 19th of December, taking up towards Christmas, of course. This is how it looks. Again, a very weak signal. We've got some high pressure towards the southwest, some low pressure in the far north, and towards the uh, eastern seaboard. The 500 millibar height anomaly. Let's just put in a couple of question marks because there's not enough there to really have any particular signal. The temperature anomaly, very weak signals, but if anything, the century says probably hinting at being a little bit mild and average, still a bit on the cool side out west. And the precipitation anomaly looks like that. Again, very weak signals. I'm not sure the model's got much of an idea from like late November, early December onwards, to be honest. Right, that's it for the USC forecast for this week. So we're going to get the expansion of the cold next week. By the look of it. So it has been very mild uh, for the past few weeks across uh, sort of northern, eastern parts of America, Midwest America. The cold in the northwest is going to expand out next week. So you're going to have a plunge. Uh, if you're watching from America, get ready, you know, get your woolies ready, uh, get your get your pipes lagged. You're going to have an expansion of the cold temperature next week. It looks like it's only a one week wonder. 
and then the car will retreat back to Canada again in the following week. But we'll wait and see about that. That's it for USA Forecast for this week. We'll do it all over again uh, next Wednesday. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, share, subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that. We're going to be back at 6 p.m. at British time. Uh, with a uh, live stream, live stream with James Walton there, and then the third part, uh, for an installment for an episode, episode three of the uh, Christmas Countdown coming up straight after that live stream. That's all for now, and thank you so much for watching.